Are you a fan of Tony Scott movies? Well, today I'm going to be doing a bit of a tribute to Mr. Scott and going over what I think are the absolute 10 best movies of his whole career. So let's rock this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Fuzz. Uh, when I first started thinking about launching this channel last year, uh, I knew one of the things that I wanted to do fairly early on in the channel's life was to dedicate a video to Mr. Tony Scott. I am a massive Tony Scott fan. Uh, he is one of my all-time favorite directors, uh, right up there for me with James Cameron, John Carpenter, and Dario Argento. Um, Tony Scott made 16 films uh, throughout the course of his career before he passed away in 2012 after tragically taking his own life. In many ways, I feel like Tony Scott's work was very misunderstood. Um, a lot of people don't realize that he actually did a lot of really artsy, uh, creative, cutting-edge stuff in his work, uh, particularly in his later films. He was simply a master of motion in cinema. But because his films also happened to be killer popcorn action flicks, uh, his work was often overlooked and dismissed and even panned by many critics and film snobs. Yes, his style was very different than that of his brother Ridley, uh, and I think he got a lot of shit for it while he was still alive. Uh, but I'd suggest his films were every bit as cinematic as Ridley's films. He just had a completely different visual style. But he showed us that there's more than one way to paint a masterpiece, and that artistic integrity comes in many different forms. If I remember right, I think there was an interview once where Tony was actually talking about the difference between his films and his brother Ridley's films. And um, he had an interesting analogy. He said Ridley's films were more like these beautiful classical symphonies, very prestigious, where Tony's films were more like rock and roll, right? And uh, I'm a big fan of rock and roll, as you can probably tell. And so this really worked for me and connected with me. Tony was an innovator and a major influence on the contemporary action film. In fact, I would suggest that almost every action film we've seen over the last probably 25, 30 years owes something to Tony Scott's work and the foundation that he laid down. Uh, Tony Scott took a very stylized approach to action film. Uh, the camera was always in motion. Uh, he could create intensity, uh, movement, and a sense of urgency just by how he chose to use the camera. He had this kind of frenetic and chaotic approach where he would cut many different types of shots uh, together. Um, he would often use filters and crazy effects and even different types of film stock uh, in order to get the sort of trippy but slick cinematic visual feel that he was after. Apparently, Denzel Washington used to call him 10 Camera Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because Tony always had like a shitload of cameras on whatever he was filming. Um, that's just the way he rolled. He always wanted to have a whole range of shots that he could cut together. Maybe some zoomed in, some zoomed out, some from different angles. Um, and he'd splice them all together to make this kind of intense montage. I mean, we could even be just talking about a simple scene of dialogue between two people. And Tony would put multiple cameras on each person, right? And then do all this fast cutting while they're having this conversation. And that alone created this intensity and created movement, even if there wasn't really any action happening on screen and was just two people having a mundane conversation. So it was pretty brilliant how he, how he used movement in film. I feel like Tony Scott really hit his stride and, and was getting, finding his groove in the, uh, in the 2000s, really. Um, I feel like if he had lived and if he continued, uh, he could have delivered some of the most artistic, compelling, uh, and stylized films of his entire career. Um, he would have directed Top Gun Maverick, we know that, and it would have been every bit the success that it ended up being. So I think it might have re-energized his career. Uh, Tony Scott was simply a brilliant director and an innovative director, and I just feel like he didn't get the recognition he deserved while he was alive. But I hope that over time, people will come to appreciate his work more and more. So I'm going to go through 10 films that I think represent the best of the work that Tony Scott did. Uh, this is my personal list. You don't have to agree. Um, some of my picks and placement on the list might be a little controversial to some, so... But this is just how I feel. Uh, as a longtime Tony Scott fan, I love his work. So let's get into it. So starting off at number 10, uh, and I hope I don't get flamed too much for this, uh, but it's 1986's Top Gun. Um, this might be a little controversial. Uh, a lot of people may be wondering why I don't have it a little higher on my list. 
Um, honestly, this film has never been one of my favorite Tony Scott films. I do like the film. Um, as someone who grew up in the 70s and 80s, I definitely have a nostalgic connection to it. Um, it's got some very quotable moments, some classic, culturally iconic moments. But relative to Tony's other films, this was never one of my favorites. Um, in fact, I debated whether I should even include this on my top 10 list. Um, it was between this and taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, which now becomes my honorable mention, I should say. Um, I couldn't decide, but ultimately this one had more cultural impact and more quotable moments and more rewatchability. So I chose Top Gun for my number 10. For number nine, I chose 2001's Spy Game on Blu-ray. Uh, this is a little bit more straightforward for Tony Scott, not quite as crazy and artsy as some of uh, his later work, uh, but it's a great geopolitical spy thriller uh, starring Robert Redford and Brad Pitt. Both deliver great performances in this role, and I'm not even a big Brad Pitt fan, uh, but I am a Robert Redford fan, and uh, this is a well-done film, so number nine, spy game for me. For number eight, I chose 1991's The Last Boy Scout. Uh, this is one I don't actually have on physical media. There is a Blu-ray available for Last Boy Scout, but I just never got around to picking it up. I've been holding off on buying it. I do have a digital copy of it, which I know, I, I don't count digital as a legitimate part of my collection at all. Uh, but still, I do have a digital stream of Last Boy Scout, but I've been holding off on getting a, a physical copy because I'm hoping that with Warner's 100th anniversary this year, that we could actually get a 4K disc of that. So we'll see if that comes to fruition, um, but that's why I don't have a physical copy. But either way, it's a great movie. Uh, Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans, an early role by Halle Berry. Um, it's kind of a murder, police investigation, political corruption kind of deal without getting too much into it. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil anything, but check it out. The Last Boy Scout from 1991. Okay. Now we're getting into the really good stuff, the stuff that I get really excited about that I think is Tony's best work. Um, so at number seven, we have Enemy of the State. Uh, this is a great film. Um, now I'll admit I'm not the biggest Will Smith fan, but I love Gene Hackman. I love John Voight. Um, and this is just a fantastic, uh, supremely rewatchable movie. Um, I can watch this thing over and over again. I, oh, I have over the years. Now, this is one that I'm hoping that we'll see on 4K someday. But sadly, it's a Touchstone Pictures release, which means it's under the Disney umbrella. And Disney has kind of taken a dump on physical media collectors in recent years, haven't they? So um, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that things will change, but uh, it's not clear whether this is one we'll ever get on 4K. It's a good uh, murder mystery, political murder and corruption, government corruption, surveillance state kind of movie. Um, I highly recommend it. If you haven't ever seen this one, it's a great film. So Enemy of the State at number seven for me. At number six, I'm going to go back to 1995 for Crimson Tide. Another fantastic release. Uh, this is a really compelling uh, submarine film. Um, in fact, I would suggest it's probably one of the best submarine films ever made. Second, maybe to only uh, Hunt for Red October. But this, the, the chemistry between Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman in this film is so strong. Uh, they deliver just powerful knockout performances that uh, possibly among some of the best performances ever delivered in any Tony Scott film. So uh, yeah, if you haven't checked this out, Crimson Tide is, is the way to go if you like submarine movies. Okay, so I'm getting into my top five now, and it's worth noting that all of these films in my top five are fairly evenly weighted in my mind, uh, meaning depending on what day you catch me on, any one of these could be my number one or my number two or whatnot. Uh, you can switch them around. They're all interchangeable to me. They're all awesome films. So at number five, I chose 2005's Domino. Now, this film I don't think gets quite enough love. Uh, it gets panned quite a bit by critics, but if we're talking purely visual aesthetics, I think this film is Tony's absolute masterpiece. Um, Story-wise, it's not maybe as good as his other films, but in terms of the style and some of the techniques he uses, um, this is Tony at his most extreme 
full Tony, right? He went full Tony on this. That's what I always say about Domino. I mean, the film looks like a cocaine fever dream. Uh, this film is actually quite brilliant. Uh, it's about bounty hunters. It, it's based on the, the true story of uh, real-life bounty hunter Domino Harvey. Um, and this film follows these bounty hunters around uh, as they're having a reality TV show made about their adventures. <laughs> and what's really funny about this, it's, it's kind of a quirky film. It's, it's, it's both uh, action-packed, but it also has a satirical edge to it, a satirical bent to it, where it's kind of amusing. Uh, Christopher Walken delivers this awesome performance as this kind of kooky reality TV show producer. And um, it's worth watching just for his performance alone. So um, if you haven't checked out Domino, uh, you're in for a real treat uh, in terms of style. Uh, it's also worth noting that this film was co-written by Richard Kelly, who wrote and directed Donnie Darko. So there's that connection as well. Uh, just a great film. At number four, we have Unstoppable from 2010. This one I actually saw in the theater when it first came out, and you know I didn't know at the time, and how would I, <laughs> uh, that I was watching uh, Tony Scott's final film. And this is such an amazing film. It was a great way to go out. Uh, it's sad because we lost him, but he delivered just a fantastic uh, action-packed film about a runaway train. So another Denzel role. Denzel is great in this. Chris Pine did a good job in this as well. So this movie is sometimes number one for me. Uh, I really, really enjoy this one. And so it just depends on my mood as to where it ranks on my list. But today it's number four. At number three, and I just watched this the other night, Deja Vu, another Denzel film. Um, by the way, it's worth noting, uh, Denzel is my all-time favorite actor. I absolutely love Denzel's stuff. And so the fact that he worked with Tony Scott on no less than five films, to me, that was a match totally made in heaven. Uh, and also Jim Caviezel is in this, and he just delivers a very chilling performance uh, as the antagonist for this film. So this was uh, another unique kind of uh, story. It had a bit of a unique angle to it. Um, I won't give much away. In fact, I'm not even going to get into the story on this. I think the less you know about it going in, the better if you haven't seen it. But Deja Vu from 2006, just a fantastic movie and one that I would highly recommend if you are into later Tony Scott and Denzel films. Uh, before I get into my final entries here, I just wanted to take a moment to ask you to please consider subscribing if you're digging this channel. If you're enjoying the content I'm putting out, uh, just hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. So coming in at number two for me, we have... Man on Fire. I just watched this last night. I hadn't seen it in a few years. And uh, wow, this is such a good film. Uh, it never gets old for me. Every time I watch it, I'm just blown away by this film. Uh, now, this one, I think, has probably Denzel's best performance ever next to maybe Training Day. Uh, Training Day was a great film, but this, this rivals Training Day in my book uh, in terms of Denzel's performance. So, but if you haven't seen this, this is, uh, again, I'm not going to get into the story too much. I think the less you know going into these things, the better if you haven't seen them. But this is such a powerful and compelling movie and really tugs at the heartstrings as well. So, uh, yeah, check it out if you haven't seen it already. But Man on Fire is my number two. And finally, for my number one, you probably guessed it by now, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, this would be True Romance. And this is just a fantastic release. I got it on 4K here, the Deluxe Steelbook Limited Edition box set, which is cool because you get the hard case, but you also get a beautiful Steelbook. Uh, yeah, how cool is that, huh? The art is amazing on this. And I've always, this is actually one of my favorite Steelbooks that I own. In fact, this, uh, this, edition, this whole edition, is probably one of the coolest uh, limited edition sets that I own. Uh, but what a great film. I, I don't know how much I can really say about this that hasn't already been said. Uh, I mean, you've got a star-studded all-star cast, right? I mean, Dennis Hopper, Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Christopher Walken, Tom Sizemore, uh, the list goes on, right? Story and script written by Quentin Tarantino. I mean, wow. Tarantino and Tony Scott together, that was always going to be solid gold.
this is just a fantastic film. And uh, yeah, so this is my number one, True Romance. So that just about wraps up my list of the 10 best Tony Scott films uh, in my book. Um, some of you might be wondering why uh, I didn't include things like Beverly Hills Cop 2 or Days of Thunder, uh, considering that they're actually on 4K. Honestly, I just didn't think the films were worthy of being in the top 10, regardless of what format they're on. I am hoping that we're going to see more Tony Scott movies in 4K at some point, but so many of his films were under the Disney umbrella, whether it be Touchstone Pictures, Hollywood Pictures, or 20th Century Fox. I'm hoping that Disney pulls its head out of its ass. There are so many Tony Scott films I'd love to see on 4K. If I could, I'd get uh, Man on Fire, Unstoppable, Deja Vu. I mean, all his stuff was shot on film uh, with practical effects. I mean, imagine how great some of those later Tony Scott films would look on 4K if we could only get them released. There are a couple films that, that we might see on 4K. Uh, the Last Boy Scout, maybe Spy Game. Those aren't under Disney's control. So it's always possible those could appear at some point. But uh, the real big ones, uh, we're just kind of in limbo and waiting for it right now. And it's not clear whether Disney's gonna, gonna really give us those later films in 4K or not. So I hope you've enjoyed my little tribute here to Tony Scott. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.